My name is Kevin Marchant with Master Graphics. And today I'm going to show you and talk a little bit more about the 3D Systems Figure 4 Standalone DLP Printer. As explained, this printer is an open bath system. In other words, uh, we take a bottle of material and after we've mixed it up, whether we've shaken it or rolled it for an extended period of time, then that mixes this print material up well. We take that material and we simply pour it into the bath, depending on how big our prints are, how many prints we're making. Uh, there are some level guides back here to help us decide that uh, level of fullness in here. The way this printer works, it's got these arms to the drop down, and then as it prints, it literally pulls the print out of the bath. It's kind of fun to watch, especially on the fast draft mode. It's very impressive. Uh, from here, we would remove that print, and I'm going to show you this process, but we're going to go through two different open baths of isopropyl alcohol, or IPA, as most of us call it, to deal with it on a regular basis, because kind of mouthful. And before I do that, I'm going to put on some gloves out here. So uh, we can go through both baths. One is a dirtier IPA, meaning it's been used before. That's going to help me remove the surface tension printing material from my solid printed part or parts. And we're going to do this simply by uh, using some provided tools with our printer to physically push the print off of the print case here. So, so I'm going to come over here, get that ready. Normally I would wear a mask, but it's kind of hard to hear with that on. So hopefully everybody can hear me okay. This has been dripping uh, overnight. And I printed it yesterday afternoon, last night. And uh, so now we're just going to get a little bit of that excess. And what you're seeing is this has some pockets in there. So geometry dependent, you may have more time uh, needed to get rid of the excess print material at this stage than others. Again, I had to break some surface tension in here by changing the angle in which the part came up because it has some cavities that created a vacuum. Those guys look big enough. So now I'm simply going to come over here to my first IPA bath. I'm going to grab my pusher tool. It's got pegs that line up with the holes. I don't know if you can see that. And that allows me to simply come in here and push that print off of the print carriage. This is tough gray material. I'm not concerned at all if I drop this part into my bath other than the splash effect. I use a nice tall tub to keep that from happening often at all. Pop those guys off. Simply gonna set this guy up there. And then I'm just gonna reach in here and I'm just gonna swirl them around a little bit in my IPA. Now again, this is the gross removal stage. So I'm just gonna swirl these guys around. I may even come over here and grab my paintbrush just to help scrub on that a little bit. Just to get as much of that surface tension material off of there as possible. And I know I've done this well when I'm done with my part through the whole process because then it's not shiny. Also at this stage, what I want to do is use my provided knife scraper that has a beveled sharpened edge. It's not so sharp it'll cut you unless you try really hard. But what it's going to allow me to do is come in here in the bottom of my part and it's going to allow me to easily and quickly remove that support material that attached my print to my print carriage. Depending on the surface that I've got or how much is left, I may even come back and scrape that a little bit more. Depending on my part geometry helps me decide where I'm going to put my support and where I'm going to attach my print to my print carriage. And I believe that we're going to see that shortly with the 3D Sprint software review. It's super easy, super quick, and very intelligent. Got it sealed in there nicely. Then I'm going to switch over here to my number two 
bath. This bath is much cleaner IPA. This is going to allow me to get by part of just the next step cleaner with that material. You can just use some, some finger tension, scrub it on this. Again, I'm going to bring my brush in here. These guys reached out. I can look at that. And what I'm looking for is just any area that I haven't previously noticed that is otherwise still has material or has any support attachment points left on it that I don't want. And when I'm happy with that, then I'm just going to set this aside. Different materials want different drying times, different geometries going to require a little bit different drying time. But as a general rule, we're going to let that sit for about 90 minutes to air dry. I'm just going to cover these guys in there. So one of the beautiful things about this printing system that we have is the simplicity of use. So we've got an open bath means that I know exactly how much material is in there to run my print. Uh, we've got a system that comes with multiple plates. So I can come over here to my next carriage. I can simply set that in. The system itself is robust enough. I don't have to worry about balancing or leveling any of this stuff out. It's ready to go, which means if I've got another print, I'm off to the races. To do that, I simply come in here, I could say reprint on this screen. I'm going to scan my bottle of material. It's going to ask me some questions out here. It's basically going to say, hey, do I have a clean platform? Yes. Did I stir it? Yes. Is it filled enough for my print job? Yes, yes, and yes. And then I would say start job if I wanted a second set of what I've got. If I don't, then I simply come out here. I don't put in a new carriage. <clears throat> and what's wonderful and a beautiful part of this system is it comes with what's called a garage. And that means I have a place to park my material when it's not in use. So if I'm not going to print for a while, or if I'm done printing in gray for today, and the next material I'm going to load is another tray with white material or rubber-like material, then I can simply load that up and store my non-in-use material in the bottom of my printer, load up my next material, or I can simply close this guy down. Once my parts are dry, I'm going to bring them over here to my UV station. I'm going to place them in my UV. Our next dent UV has a built-in timer in here, so I'm simply going to say start. It starts counting down from 90, 90 minutes, which is the most average material curing time. Run silently until it's done. So hopefully this gives you a good overview of the figure four system.